All right, folks, today I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to create a uh, to keep track of your checking account balance. And uh, this assumes that you know how to uh, open up an a Excel file and uh, create a new, new file. I've named this one Balance Checking. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to cell 1A. As a quick reminder, uh, A, B, C, D, these are all columns. Uh, one, two, three, four, these are rows, and then where columns and rows intersect, that's a cell. All right, so we're gonna start off with our first cell, and, and you can put uh, headers on these, uh, or titles on each uh, column, but um, I don't tend to do that, so uh, we're gonna skip that for right now. But at the first, um, the first block over here, the first cell, we're gonna type in a date, and we're gonna start our checking account balance here on the 1st of January. And then uh, we're going to use column B for uh, credits, column C for debits, and column D is going to be our pending uh, column where we're going to project our, uh, our debits or our credits. And then column E is going to be our, our uh, memo field. Now th this probably this started off like this, I changed it. Uh, but uh, so we want this wider. Um, and you can do that just by grabbing up here where you get a line with your two different arrows. And or if it's if it's skinny and you start typing in here, so we're going to type in our starting balance. Uh, you can see that that's that's too big uh, for the field. If you go up here again where you get the line with the arrow pointing left and right, double double left click, it will automatically scale to the contents you have in there. We know we're going to have entries that are bigger, so we're going to just go ahead and make that bigger right now. All right, so once we got that, we're going to come over here and we're going to type in our starting balance. And let's say our starting balance is $500. All right, we have $500 in our checking account. The next thing you want to do is come over here um, and you're going to enter things that you know you have to pay on a regular basis and you know what the amounts are. So we're going to say rent, and let's say our rent is um, $750. And we have electric bill. And let's say their electric bill is 200 on average. And we have a water bill. Oops. And we have a water bill. And let's say our water bill is $20. Depends on what part of the country you live in. And we have insurance. And let's say our insurance is uh, $200. And uh, let's say that that's all we've got for right now, or all we can think of. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to column F, and we're going to create a formula that's going to add all these things up for us. Uh, so that we don't have to, all we got to do is enter our amounts and it, Excel will do the rest of the work for us. So we're going to have to enter a formula. So to do that, we're going to click on the cell that we want to enter the formula into and then we're going to go up here to what's called the formula bar and we're going to click in that and we're going to start typing our formula. So our formula for this, we're going to tell it that that cell is equal to, so we're going to put an equal sign and it's going to be the sum of a bunch of numbers so we're going to type sum and then we're going to type parentheses to tell the first set of numbers that we want to work with and we're going to type a, a dollar sign which tells it we're going to anchor um, the the cell the column b and the and we're going to anchor the row one all right, so basically we're anchoring this cell that it highlights for us, and we're going to um, we're going to add that with everything through D1. So we're going to put a colon, type in D1, and that's the end of that first number that we're going to add. So we're going to we're going to take everything that's in B, C, and D, and we're going to add it, and we want to hit a, a plus sign and then open our parentheses again and we're going to type in b2 plus c2 plus d2 and we're going to close our parentheses and hit enter so that's going to tell us we're going to add everything up here with anything that's down here to give us our result over here in column f 
So we hit enter and um, it's going to give us our amount. Now this amount's not right. I can't have paid the rent with $500 in my account and had $1,250 in there. That doesn't make any sense. What, what the problem is, is I forgot to put my negative sign in here. Anytime something's coming out of the account, it has to be a negative, right? So once we do that, um, we can see that after paying our rent, we're in the hole already, all right? So uh, what we did was we forgot to put our paycheck in there. So let's say we get all these things happen on the first, so I'm gonna grab the bottom right hand corner of this cell. Now you notice there's a thick plus sign and then there's a plus sign that has four different arrows on it and then there's a one that's a skinny plus sign. So we're gonna grab that skinny plus sign, we're gonna left click and pull down and it's gonna fill in those dates. Now it's gonna auto fill uh, to fill the series. So you notice this is January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. Let's say I don't want that. I just want it to all be the first. So I'm gonna uh, left click on this little drop down uh, box here and I'm gonna click copy cells. And then now it's all gonna be everything's happening on the first. But I forgot my paycheck, all right? So I'm gonna click cell two. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna tell it to insert. Okay, it's gonna give me a line. I can control C and control V to copy uh, and paste my, uh, my date in there. And I'm gonna put in here that my paycheck, uh, let's say my paycheck is, um, let's say it's $2,000. Okay, so, so now um, I need my formula back over here. Right. So what you can do if you want to, you can copy this, control C, go up here, go to your control bar, hit paste, but I have to fix my, my formula because see it's, it's taking everything from the first line, but it's adding everything from the second line. And what I need is I need everything on the second line. So everywhere where it has a three, I'm going to put a two. Okay, delete two delete two and now hit enter and now it's fixed my uh, it's fixed my formula all right now my formula up here at the top is good but I, I don't have formulas down here I don't have to type in my formula for each one of these once I got my formula at the top again I can use the skinny plus sign and drag down okay and it will fill in those numbers for me Matter of fact, I can drag it down where I don't even have numbers, and it just the amount just stays the same, 1330 all the way down, until I put numbers in over here, and then when I do, it will it will fix that formula for me. All right, so so um, now I've um, I've got in here my paycheck, so let's put that in the memo column so I know what that is. So my paycheck, and then I pay my rent, my electric, my water, my insurance. Uh, I'm still looking okay as far as my balance goes. Let's say that I also have a car payment and a truck payment. All right, and my car payment's 500, and my truck payment's 600. Okay, again, that doesn't make any sense. I have to make sure these are negative numbers because they're coming out of the account, all right? So this is a common mistake people make is you gotta remember to put in the negative number if it's something that you're paying. All right, so let's say that I also have grocery uh, run and let's say, let's say I shop at Kroger um, and normally every month or every time I go shopping I spend $300, all right? Again, it should be a negative number. And now you can see I'm in trouble because I just, I've overdrawn by $70. So you got two options. Um, and let me go ahead and fill in my dates over here. Let's, let's just say that everything else happens every other day. So, uh, so we got the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever those, those dates might be. So, so now that tells me, wait a minute, um, I can't spend $300 at Kroger, otherwise I'm gonna go negative. So let's say you decide, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna, to go light here on groceries and I'm gonna only spend $200. And now you can see, well, you're getting close, but at least you're not breaking the bank there. 
All right, so let's say our next paycheck happens on the 15th. So we're going to uh, change this to the 15th. And we're going to put in uh, another $2,000 paycheck. And you can see, so after my paycheck, my balance is healthy again. So, um, you know, maybe if you can put off groceries till after that paycheck, that might be better, right? So this will give you a, a way to kind of tell what your expenses are, when they normally happen, and you can actually uh, project and budget your amount to, to where you don't have any problems. Now, one thing that I do is I move all these amounts out of this column, and if you're okay just having everything in this column, you can leave it there. But I move everything over here so it's easier for me to see my, my credits and my expenses. So to do that, I'm gonna uh, highlight my column here. I'm gonna hit Control X, which tells it to cut. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hit Control V, and it now moves that over here. But you notice I broke my, you notice I broke my formula. All right, so to fix that, I can go back over here to my cell, and what it did was, everything's here okay, but it, for some reason, Excel gets rid of that. When I cut that, it cut it out of the formula. So what I can do is I can type that back in, and what I want is B2 plus C2 plus, I'm gonna have to fix this, D2, hit enter, and now my formula's back there. Okay, so again, I can copy all these. These are all debits, they're all charges. I can highlight that. Uh, I click on the first cell and then I hit shift and left click on the bottom cell and it will highlight all those for me. Hit control X, come over here, hit control V, it will paste those in. But again, my formula is broken. Now, I don't have to go back and fix this formula. The formula appears fine, so again, I can just uh, left click over here when I got the the plus sign the skinny plus sign drop drag it down and it will fix all those formulas for me all right same thing over here my paycheck control X control V to move it over there broke my formula but that's okay I know how to fix it now all right and you just keep doing that for the rest of the month the rest of the the year uh, just whatever dates uh, things happen and what happens put it in here and then Excel is going to tell you what your balance is so all you have to do is you know keep um, if you spend something at Amazon okay I spent 120 I spent 120 um, and there it is okay what your new balance is now again I use this column to stage things so that uh, I know that these are pending charges. So if I go in and I have a credit card payment, okay, and I'm planning on spending $1,000 on that credit card payment. All right, so let's say I also have a phone bill, and let's say that's, uh, that's $250 coming out of the account. And so let's say I also have taxes due um, and my taxes are $750. And you can see now I'm in trouble here. And then let's say that on the 15th, oops, I already got my check for the 15th. So let's say, uh, let's say on January or uh, February 1st, I get my next paycheck. And that's another 2000 to the plus. So you can see if I pay my taxes before February 1st, I'm gonna go negative, all right? But I can highlight that, that, uh, that, that row uh, by clicking over here on the, the 14th, hit Control X, move my cursor below my paycheck, right click, select Insert Cut Cells, it will move that down there and then I have to update my formulas again. And you can see now I don't go negative by moving my taxes after my paycheck. Okay, so again, this will help you kind of keep track of, of what's going on and maybe when you need to pay certain, certain things. Okay, and so I'd have to change this date from, from January to say, okay, I want to pay this 
um, on the third after my paycheck is, is in my account and I'll pay my taxes then. All right, so again, you just keep doing that, uh, changing your dates, keep those up to date, keep your projections in here, and then when you have um, additions, so, so let's say that that you got these, we're, we're in January now, so you got all these bills again. Um, again, I can left click up here to select the cell, come down here, hit uh, shift, left click, control C to copy those, Control V to paste them in, and and then select these amounts over here, because uh, those are, let's say those are all going to be the same. Control C, Control V. All right, paste those in, there. and you can see I run into trouble down there. We'll, we'll, these are all kind of fictional amounts anyway, so maybe that is or isn't an issue for you. But let's say that that you've got these these amounts in here, and uh, you have an unexpected expense. So let's say you have to come in here and add add an item. Uh, again, you just kind of uh, left click on the the row column, uh, the row number, right click, select insert, and let's say you had tire repair, and that cost you twenty five dollars, and that was on the uh, February sixth. And where's my where's my amount? I don't see my amount. Again, just come up here. It doesn't matter where you're at. Just come anywhere above. Uh, left click, pull that that down, and it will update your formulas for you. So again, you don't have to add and subtract this all the time. Uh, you can just kind of look at it or enter your amounts. Let Excel do the work for you, and um, and hopefully that helps you out. Now um, I will. Uh, do another video on how to add additional sheets in case you want a different sheet for each month and you want your ending balance to show up on the starting balance of, uh, of your other sheets. And then uh, I'll also do a video on how to keep track of your bills and help Excel show you how to, how to prioritize which bill you're paying and keep track of the balances there too. So uh, at any rate, hopefully that helps you out um, and you... Uh, you're able to budget your uh, expenses a little bit better using this tool.